Power supply I'm using for this initial demonstration is an MFJ 4230MV 30 amp switching power supply. You can see right now that it's on and the radio is drawing less than 1 amp in receive mode, which is what I would expect. Back here you can see what the RF setup is. The RF, there's an RF cable that's into the main antenna port and that's coming along to essentially a stack of connectors but on the end of the connectors is a 50 ohm termination so right now there is no antenna involved just this short cable to a termination for the USB port I have actually used a standard USB cable and I have wrapped a FT240-31 toroid with about 10 turns in an attempt to make sure that there is no RFI coming in on the USB cable. So you can see that here attached to the USB port on the back of the radio. This is the Yaesu main DSP and LCD version firmware that I'm running at the moment. These are the latest up-to-date files from the Yaesu website. Parameters of this test I have, if I go to function here, and I go back to the menu item that indicates somewhere in here. There it is. So right now I have the radio set to cat rate of 4800 bits per second cat total of 1000 milliseconds or one second and RTS to disable. The problem is insensitive to these settings but these are the particular ones that I'm showing to demonstrate the problem. Indicated just with the terminator I'll turn up the radio and you'll hear that it is just receiving internal noise plus whatever thermal noise is coming in on the attenuator. Now there's no problem this is a case across the entire bands with a little few whistles from things like the computer equipment in the room. And if I use the RF gain key, let me get this to focus again. If I use the RF gain key, you will hear that the receiver noise decreases. And then even if I turn up the speaker, all is quiet. Now I come over to the computer here and I will initiate from the menu N1MM logger, which is something that actually communicates with the radio. The program is now talking to the radio. If I come over here and I turn up the volume, you can hear a very rhythmic clicking sound. If I further or more turn up turn up the RF gain, this sound is precisely in time with the computer interrogating the computer interrogating the radio. It's just easier to hear if I turn the RF gain up or down so that only the, the noise in the radio de decreases and now I can very clearly hear digital interference on the receive line as the computer interrogates the radio. Now, you will notice that a common internet fix is to go to function, go to monitor, and set the monitor to zero. But you notice that I said zero already, and the problem is still there. If I turn up the monitor, I can actually make it worse. But if I turn it down to zero, it's still there. And even if I disable monitor entirely, it's still there. What I'll demonstrate for you is that even when the RF gain is down to the point where I can actually hear the, no the radio noise, if I turn up the volume, You can hear that it's actually competing with the radio noise. This turns out to be very fatiguing in actual radio listening practice. Demonstration that it is really connected to the 
computer interrogating the radio. If I turn this up so you can hear it, and I go over here to NM1, N1MM, and I say exit. Confirm that. Instantly the noise stops in the radio. I haven't touched anything on the radio. If I come over here, and I go down and I enable NM1 plus N1MM plus again. Now it's interrogating the radio. And I hear the problem again. The problem being demonstrated, I want to show you that changing the baud rate for the communications to the radio has a direct effect on the nature of the sound. So we're going to go over to NM11 here. We're going to go to the uh, config, configure ports and control. I'm going to go over here to set, and I'm going to deliberately set the baud rate to be something a little higher rate, like 19.2. Going to OK, and then OK. You'll hear that the rate changes. It's now much higher frequency because the baud rate is higher, but it still occurs at the same rep rate, which is the computer interrogating for commands. This occurs no matter what center frequency I have set in the radio. So let's turn up the RF gain again. You can hear the problem. And now I'm going to move 500 kilohertz at a time. This makes no difference to this sound. And it's all the way down to the bottom now. There is no change. I'll go back to 7 megahertz. Final demonstration. Now I have a different USB cable than the first one I was using with a clamp on toroid. Probably doesn't make any difference, but the point is it's a different USB cable. It is now connected to a totally different computer. This is a MacBook. MacBook is running Mac Logger DX, and you notice it says the radio is available. And if I go to preferences, you will see that the radio is connected. And it's using a 4800 baud and various things. And if I so the, the the radio is definitely connected. If I tune the, you'll see the frequency change if I tune. And I think you can maybe hear it. It's a little different because the polling in that is a little different, but it's the same problem. And in fact, I can demonstrate that if I turn the RF gain. Notice that the verification is down. Turn the volume up. There it is again. And I'm going over here and I'm going to stop MagLocker ID once again here. Let's just make sure. Same across all different frequencies. If I go over here and I'm going to stop MacLogger DX Pro or D MacLogger DX, the instant I stop it, the noise stops. This leads me to the conclusion that this is happening as a digital line to RF path interference in the radio and that is an internal hardware issue.